So what you're seeing in the last week is a mad scramble. Yes. Literally a mad mm -hmm. scramble for Bitcoin because in the first few days, actually first few weeks, every dollar that was coming in that BlackRock and Bitwise and Fidelity and Valkyrie had to buy, GBTC was selling because yes. they decided to keep their fee really high because this was actually reasonably smart. I don't like it, but it was reasonably smart. They're like, look, the vast majority of our investors in GBTC, the trust, bought in at much, much lower prices. So they bought in at five, eight, ten thousand $10,000 Bitcoin. Now we're at 30, 40, 50,000. Yep. If they sell, to avoid the high fee, to go into one of the low fee products, they're going to pay taxes. Way better to just pay the one and a half percent fee and defer the taxes. So that was actually a genius move on their part to keep the money train going because DCG has its own problems and Barry, you know, is being sued by the yeah. agency and all this good stuff. But that wasn't a bad. But the people who had it in a retirement account where taxes don't matter, they're like, I'm out. I'm going to transfer to Bitwise where I can pay zero for the first six months or to BlackRock where I can pay 20, I think 30 basis points. So yeah. that every day, 200 million, 400 million, 500 million was coming out and that was available to buy with the new inflows. Well, suddenly no one was selling GBTC and they still had to come up with, you know, on some days, 10,000 Bitcoin. There's only 900 yeah. created every day. So you had this massive supply demand imbalance. And the rumor was yesterday or the day before that the OTC desks basically they were, were dry. They just didn't have any Bitcoin to sell. In 2024, we're looking at more fiat money pouring into Bitcoin than ever before in Bitcoin's entire history. A whopping $300 billion is expected to flood into the space this year, driving prices to levels we've never seen before. This is the latest prediction out from Mark Yusko. Recently, Mark Yusko talked about Bitcoin's performance in 2024, stating that it has surpassed all expectations. He also discussed how the introduction of the Bitcoin ETFs have had a significant impact on the market. Yusko mentions that traditional bankers are not fond of Bitcoin, perhaps because they cannot control it like traditional currencies. He reassured everyone that Bitcoin is secure and cannot be stolen, unlike physical cash. Moreover, Yusko made a bold prediction that more fiat currency would be converted into Bitcoin this year than in the entire history of Bitcoin. This suggests a growing interest and trust in Bitcoin as an investment option. Make sure to stick around at the end of the video where Yusko reveals the key factors that will trigger Bitcoin's price explosion over the coming days. Also guys, if you want to stay most up to date on the crypto world, I sent out a daily 5-minute crypto newsletter that covers expert predictions, on-chain data breakdowns, and breaking news all for free. Click the first link in the description, enter your email, and join over 50,000 others to become a better crypto investor right now. Now here's what Mark Yusko thinks about Bitcoin's insane price surge and whether we'll see a correction over the next few weeks. I think we absolutely have met and exceeded expectations, especially because expectations changed very dramatically right after the release of or the approval of, of the ETFs. So, you know, coming into the year, I was pretty convinced that that they were going to approve the ETFs yep. and that that was going to accelerate this slow trend toward fair value and fair value yeah. if you look at the metcalf's law model we talked about this last year even was somewhere in the low 50s and so by the having and the having is you know third week of april this year uh i thought we would drift you know from the the 30s up toward 50 and and people would be pretty pretty happy with that but the accelerant to that would be yeah. the approval of ETF. Well, well, why is that an accelerant? Well, it's a demand shock because what, what the ETF does is it opens up the opportunity to invest in Bitcoin to a, a larger group of people. And, you know, since I am a boomer, I can say it's a boomer wrapper for those investors that they're not really comfortable negotiating online. They don't really want to carry a ledger around. They they don't even really trust Coinbase yet. So they're like, 
look, if you're going to put it in something I can put in my 401k or in my Schwab account, bring it. But here was the problem is first you had to have approval, which, you know, Gary Gensler had been against until the courts kind of ruled or judge ruled against him. So he had to go ahead and, and approve it. But then there was a second leg, which we saw in the week after. And that's what I talk about expectations changed is there were a lot of people said, oh, this is a buy the rumor, sell the news. You know, it's already priced in. And we had the move from 30 to, I think we got all the way up to 47. And yeah. we said, oh, it's going to crash right after. And right after the approval, Vanguard, Bank of America, handful of others said, no, just because you approved it, we're still not going to allow our clients to buy it. Now, think about what they just said. Right. They're telling us, humans, that the money that, that's ours, that we put in their company, we can't use to buy what we want. And I, I know. know you guys have experienced a lot with cannabis and, and other. It's just ridiculous. So in the past week, we've seen the CEO of Vanguard mysteriously retire. Maybe you think, was fired. That, you I, think yeah, that was okay. attributable? Look, he was there 33 was years. The Maybe he was planning to retire yeah. anyway. But I don't know. I I think he made a call or someone made a call. I think they got a lot of pushback. And I think they're going to change their mind. Merrill Lynch has changed their mind. UBS yeah. has changed their mind. So people are coming around. So all that said, now we've had this massive run. You know, we went from 47 all the way back. I think we hit 38 and people are like, see, I told you, sell the news. Yeah. And the stalwarts were like, that's a gift, right? Yeah. I can buy more yeah, right. at a cheaper price. Now, <laughs> if you, and, and I, don't, I don't even call myself a conspiracy theorist, but if you believe as I do, that if you're a large investor, and yep. you know that you need to buy a big old chunk of something. What is the oldest trick on Wall Street? What do you do, right? If you want to buy a lot of something, you actually sell it. You actually spread Correct. rumors that it's lousy and you push the price down. I mean, you know, Dwight Anderson used to work for Julian Robertson. He tells this story all the time. They wanted to buy a big position in copper. And he's like, all right, Julian, here's my, my report on on copper let's let's go buy it julian's like yeah are you joking we'll sell 50 million copper and then you tell people that we're selling copper because i want to buy more than 50 million of copper i want to buy a lot of copper and yeah. soros would do the same thing and i mean so blackrock knew that they were gonna have to buy a bunch perhaps they were the ones telling people to sell i get it that the bankers don't like this technology Right? Bitcoin in particular replaces, it obviates the need for the trust industry. Right. We talked about this in past shows, right? If in the old yeah. days, if I wanted to lend you guys money, we had to have ledgers and we had to have somebody make sure that the ledgers were accurate. Yeah. That somebody was the banks for 838 years. It's a long time. They took a very nice fee for making sure that our ledgers matched mm -hmm. and we trusted them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, again, I, I, I don't know if I told the story on here, but imagine I have this recurring nightmare. I go to the ATM, I punch in my code yeah. and it says zero. Like yeah. how would I prove it's not zero? I don't have a statement. I haven't had a statement in 10 years. Good it's point. their word against mine, right? I'm trusting them that they didn't steal all my money. But if they wanted to, they, they could pretty easily. But with Bitcoin, I don't have to trust them anymore. If I own a Bitcoin on the network and all the nodes agree that Mark owns that Bitcoin, I am my own bank. So yeah. I understand that the so, bank just don't like it. Because to your point, yeah. if I'm a big institution, okay, and I want the price to go down, let's say hypothetically, although this is not hypothetical because they got caught and they had to pay a billion dollars, yeah. a billion, a billion dollars. JP Morgan paid one bit, well, actually it was 960 million, so it wasn't a billion, but right. let's call it a billion, let's round to a billion. Fine, 
for doing exactly this. They would short gold naked, which you're not supposed to be able to do, <coughs> using futures. So there was no gold involved. They were just shorting paper to push the price down because if gold prices rise, people freak out. They're like, you're devaluing yeah. my currency. They didn't want the world to know they were devaluing the currency. So as they printed more dollars, the price of the gold started to rise. Right. So then the big bank said, no, 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 no. We need to put a tamper on that gold price. It's called spoofing. And so yeah. two years ago, they got caught and they paid this fine to the SEC, 960 million. Now, the funny part was they're like, well, yeah, but we made 20 billion doing it. Correct. So it's just like a cost of doing business. It's 5%, who cares? Now, in the Bitcoin world, that happened. But yeah, so yeah. we got to the, to the all time high. Literally on the day of the launch, of these futures backed ETFs, the price started down and we ended up going down 74%. Now that wasn't all the banks shorting, it was people freaking out and people who had bought, you know, chasing, buying what they wish they would have bought, selling. But it, the key was the beginning of that was this paper manipulation. The difference this time, these are spot ETFs, meaning when BlackRock gets an order, yep. Or when Bitwise gets an order, Fidelity gets an order, they have to go find actual Bitcoin. Yes. They can't just buy futures contracts and pretend that they have Bitcoin. If you look at its curve, it is exponential, yeah. right? And, and that point, it's exponential in two ways. One, it makes these big parabolas, and then it crashes, yeah. and it makes another parabola. But what it also does, it makes a parabolic Metcalf's law curve, meaning going from $1 to $10 is a yeah. massive move percentage-wise, right? Yes. 10 times. Going from yeah. 10 to 20, that's another 10, but it's not that big a move. Yeah. So yeah. the law of large numbers starts to catch up, but here's, here's the rub. Your point on how much money is coming in is really, really important. And I made a comment the other day on Twitter that if I believe this year more fiat will be converted into Bitcoin, actual yeah. transaction, not paper, but actual transaction, than the history of Bitcoin. In the first 15 years, and I haven't done the math exactly and counted, but I think it's right around 300 billion. I think it's a little bit less than that. And, and that's what? That's 1%? And, and of, exactly, of, but what, and the crazy oil. part is that's on a trillion two of market cap. But if it's 1.2 trillion, didn't 1.2 trillion come in? No, that's not the way it works, right? Because if I'm trying to put a dollar in and you have a dollar's worth of Bitcoin, yeah, you may say, you know what? I'm not selling it for a dollar. I'll sell it for a dollar 20. I'll sell it for a dollar 30. I'll sell it for $1.40. Yeah. And so what happens is the people that came in early, right? They had to put a very small amount of money to get a huge amount of Bitcoin. In fact, some didn't have to put in any money because they mined it. And so as that then matures and people put new money in, then the amount of capital that converted to Bitcoin is a certain number. But then if you and I trade that same thing, we're not putting any new money in, right? You're so it's yeah. it's called a multiplier. And so some people have estimated that the multiplier is like a hundred. I don't think it's that high. So like if if a dollar comes in, the price goes up a hundred a hundred dollars. Yeah. I don't think it's that high. I actually think it's it's a meaningful number. And so yeah. if you look at the last time we went from ten thousand to sixty thousand. Back in yeah. 2020, um, only 10 billion came in. Think yeah. about that. The price quintupled, or sextupled actually, sextupled, and we only brought in 10 billion into GBTC. I this time, we've already had more than 10 billion yeah. come in, and yeah. we went from 40 to 68. Yeah, but why didn't we go up the same amount? Again, law of large numbers. But yeah. here's your point. 
how much is going to come in. I think this year, 300 billion, which again is more than all the money that's been converted yeah. in the past, comes in. Well, where's that 300 billion number come from? Not just out of the sky. There's 30 trillion with a T, and that's, remember, one trillion is a dollar every second for 31,710 years. That's a lot. 30 trillion yeah. owned by us, boomers, controlled by our advisors, the UBS, the Merrill Lynch, the Vanguard, whatever. Okay. If those advisors say 1%, one percent, one that's 300 billion. Wow. So it's not 10%, it's not 50%, 1%, which is a reasonably logical number. 2% yeah. is better, 3% is better, but one is logical. Um, if 1% comes in, that's 300 billion. And that 300 billion, I think will move the price materially more wow. than 300 billion. So there's Mark Yusko with his thoughts on Bitcoin's remarkable performance in 2024. He emphasized the game-changing impact of Bitcoin ETFs and highlighted the reluctance of traditional bankers towards Bitcoin. Yusko also reassured investors about the security of Bitcoin compared to traditional currencies. His prediction about more fiat currency being converted into Bitcoin this year than ever before underscores the growing confidence and interest in Bitcoin as a valuable asset. Overall, Yusko's analysis provides valuable perspectives on the evolving landscape of Bitcoin and its potential as a transformative investment option. Before we go, a quick reminder for those who are keen on staying updated in the fast-paced world of crypto and Bitcoin, consider subscribing to our daily 5-minute crypto newsletter. It's a concise resource for the latest expert predictions, breaking news, and top on-chain analysis trusted by over 50,000 subscribers for insightful crypto investment information. Click the first link in the description to join our community and elevate your crypto investment knowledge today. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all on the next one and as always, all the best.